Okay, aloha kakahiaka. Good morning. It's Friday, August 25th at 10.58 a.m. It's Coco coming at you from Maui, Hawaii. And we are currently in the transit of dispersion sexuality. That's gate 59. That'll be our sun transit. And then gate 60, or sorry, um, gate 55, which is abundance and spirit. That's going to be our earth transit. Um, and we are currently in the third line of of these transits. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the sun first. But before I do, it's important to know that, you know, this is a, um, a thematic energy that the entire collective species of life, species of life, is experiencing right now due to the sun being in a certain part of the sky, right? Same thing with um, the moon being in a certain part of the sky at a certain fullness influences us heavily. The sun, depending on what part of the sky it's in and how long it spends in the sky and the angle that it's at, impacts us greatly. But it does it in a very subtle way in the sense that it's, it's here to help program the new life, to give new life uh, a circuitry, to give new life a definition. So... If you're on here on my Discord, which if you're on TikTok over here, hop over to my Discord so you can see the rest of this that's going on. But if you guys look over here in this other screen, you'll see the uh, the transits, which are active. And so as a reflector, I know just looking at the transits that, oh, there's going to be a little more root pressure and there's going to be a little more sacral energy in my field. So that means for me, increased energy and increased stress are something that I ought to expect, right? Just because this is what the transits are bringing. And all the other 13 like placements within human design are transiting. However, 70% of the neutrinos that are influencing us are coming from the sun. And then, of course, we live on the earth. So I like to read both. So without further ado, let's get into gate 59.3. Yeah, line three is openness. And it's Saturn exalted, where the search for identity and security can only be achieved through the dropping of barriers in order to define oneself through union where one is empowered through union and intimacy with others. The detriment is where openness is transformed into promiscuity and its attendant problems, where the drive for empowerment through union and intimacy can lead to promiscuity. So it's it's the question of appropriate openness. Um, and specifically here is the, um, the openness that is in detriment is um, one that is promiscuous, you know, one that is not necessarily... Um, leading to union and leading to intimacy, but it's kind of using union and using intimacy as a means of, of, of fulfillment or uh, as a means of drawing attention to oneself or even as a means of uh, uh, momentarily satisfying oneself and refusing to do the, um, the harder work and the, that's going to create the sustained uh, satisfaction because this gate 59 is in the solar plate or sorry, it's in the sacral, right? It's the, the red, the red circle. That's the thing that makes you a generator if it's defined and it's reaching towards the six in the solar plexus. And this is commonly known as the channel of mating, right? So this is a, um, this is like the channel that's responsible for, uh, 59 would be tearing down the walls and the six in the solar plexus would be, the, like the diaphragm that opens up to it. So the very literal um, translation of this would be like the sacral is in this 59 is like the erection. It's the phallus that becomes erect and is able to tear down walls. And then the six in the solar plexus is the yoni, the one that relaxes and opens up to receive the phallus. And that's, you know, that's where life comes from. And so, you know, during this time, uh, be really mindful about fertility because fertility is, um, lit right now right fertility is lit and so be very mindful about that and also be mindful about the again the excess sexual energy that might be um uh, uh alive within you and in terms of today you know ultimately it's like there's going to be an extra power around um intimacy and union so you might feel closer to people today than you would on any other day any other given day of the year and not to say that that is false, but to say that it is a uh, a result 
of the type of programming neutrinos that are blasting the earth right now. And ultimately in human design, you know, we're here to live our strategy and authority. So everyone we meet, every transit that we move through, there's the sacred opportunity to um, evolve deeper with that context and with that awareness and not become sucked into the um, homogenization or the, the sameness, um, the default, the um, status quo, the conformity of what everyone else is doing. So that's 59. That's our sun transit. 55 is abundance spirit. This is in the solar plexus. This is reaching down towards gate 39, which I have 39. Someone over here says they have the 659. So it's like for you, you know, you may not necessarily feel this one is strong because you already have it in your chart. And that would be a channel that is very, uh, places a lot of importance on the, the tribal mechanisms and who's my partner and deep bonds and wanting intimacy. Um, there's not necessarily a lot of openness or room for, for anything other than that. Which again, some people might not understand and that's totally okay. Hi, Anna. Um, let's see, from Southside Chi Town. Is that Chicago Town? And then Life Force is from Canada. What's up, guys? Thanks for letting me know where you're from. Um, I love seeing that because I, I kind of tend to think that people are like in California because that's where I'm from or like Hawaii. Um, so that's what's up. appreciate you guys letting me know. Um, so, okay. Back to gate 55. This one connects to gate 39, which is, um, I actually have 39. And so this 55 creates a channel for me. So typically all my centers are undefined because I'm a reflector, but because this 55 is on in the, in the earth, you know, it creates this, um, it creates this, uh, uh, definition within my chart. That's pretty unique to me. Although anyone else with the 39 will also be have this, uh, this energy defined. And again, it doesn't change who we are. It's just like a weather pattern or a piece of clothing that we're wearing now, or, um, you know, a certain broadcast frequency that's, that's affecting us. And we can either use that, um, to our advantage, or we can just get swept up in what everybody else is feeling, what everybody else is doing. So, um, line three is innocence it says here, I was only following orders is a genuine defense. So in the exaltation, we have when the form is correct and attempts at actualization have been disciplined with guidelines, failure cannot be personally attributed. The emotional possibility to recognize that despite one's best effort, failure is possible and does not need to affect the spirit. Hmm. The detriment is Mars in detriment, whereas a struggle against conformity or individual initiative can bring a superior room while safe. Oh. Oh, Luke, what's up, baby? You scared me. What's up? Ah, right on. Oh, I guess I could turn this down. I had this like blasting. It just like, it got in my ear. But what's up, dude? Um, I'm going to finish this detriment and then let's let's um, let's um bring you on for some eaching magic. I've been missing that. All uh, right. So yeah, the, I want to hear what you're saying. Yeah, we're, we're in line three of um, 55 and 59. Um, I was just reading the detriment of 55. So we already did the sun. Uh, but Mars in detriment, whereas a struggle against conformity or individual initiative can bring one superior ruin while safely hiding behind his shield. So the energy to selfishly protect one's spirit at the expense of others. So in this, in this one, innocence, you know, it's, it's, it's really begging the question of like seeing failure as um, a natural part of the process. The third line is the martyr again, which is one that is, um, you know, here to live through making mistakes. Uh, and um, provided that one does not allow those mistakes to affect your spirit, that would be the exaltation of this innocence, which is a, um, you know, it's, it's not a guardedness. It's not a protecting yourself at the expense of others. It's one that's like, okay, this, I might not win at this game, or I might not succeed in this, but it is the right thing to do. And this is what my spirit is, is calling me to do. So what does it mean when it's halfway? So that's that's what I was talking about with um, the hanging gates. So if you have 50, if you're looking at your transit composite and you have the 55 on because of the earth in 55, but you don't have the 39, that would mean that the transit is hanging, right? And so again, you, you might have this excess energy that where again, this excess emotional energy 
but there won't necessarily be the root pressure to kind of actualize it or turning into action. So you have 39 halfway. So you're like me, Elsa, um, or Ella. I keep calling you Elsa. Um, but uh, so you're like me where we have the 39 and then the transit is bringing us the 39 or the 55. And so that's creating the channel. So if your root and your solar plexus are not defined, what it means that is during this transit, they they be there's definition in there, right? Because of the circuitry you have, it's like a lamp got plugged in. And now usually what was a dark room is now lit up. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay lit up, though, because when the transits move out of this out of these gates then um then again the solar the uh the emotions might die down a little bit the stress might die down a little bit and so again it's it's a way of of being able to take inventory of the little subtle changes that are happening within you as opposed to being like oh my god i'm I, something is wrong like i'm just super emotional and i feel way more stressed out than usual like if you have the 39 that's definitely going to be something that you're feeling more stressed out and more emotional. I would hundred percent feel it, but because I'm aware, like, Oh, this is some, this is some transit energy. You know, I'm not thinking something is wrong. I'm thinking, okay, what is exactly the transit energy? And I'm, and I'm, I'm, uh, how do you say looking how to, um, more deeply understand the way that the rhythm of this cycle that we're on affects us. Cause this is the same cycle that happens every year, every August 25th, we're in, um, line three of gate 55. It, it, it shifts very subtly, but generally speaking, every year it's, it's about the same. And, and it's also the same sequence. So really looking at, um, you know, the gates that we were in before this and then the gates that are going to come after, there's a lot, a lot of information there, I know, which is why we're doing it, though, because it's, it's freaking awesome. So, um, Luke, you want to pull up 55 and, and give us the judgment? And the image and maybe the the line three of, of 55 we'll start here and then we'll go back to the sun 55 yeah i'm on it mm, mm, mm. Uh, uh, uh. let's watch the monkey king it's like a new version of the monkey king kids movie with my mom earlier yeah what you were just talking to sounded like the dragon king in the movie and i was like oh yeah that makes sense Wait, say say that again. It sounds like I was talking to the Dragon King, or well, it's not, like what you were saying about the detriment sounded like the Dragon King in that movie, just like oh. sacrificing others to save oneself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so fifty-five. Let's see. Got the flame below the thunder. So the judgment abundance has success. The king attains abundance. Be not sad. Be like sun at midday. It is not often it is not given to every mortal to bring about a time of outstanding greatness and abundance. Only a born ruler of men is able to do it because his will is directed to what is great. Such a time of abundance is usually brief. Therefore, a sage might feel sad in view of the decline that must follow. But such sadness does not befit him. Only a man who is inwardly free of sorrow and care can lead in a time of abundance. He must be like the sun at midday, illuminating and gladdening everything under heaven. Hmm. All right, the image. Both thunder and lightning come. The image of abundance. Thus the superior man decides lawsuits and carries out punishments. This hexagram has a certain connection with Shiho biting through gate 21 in which thunder and lightning similarly appear together but in the reverse order in biting through laws are laid down here they are made they are applied and enforced clarity lee within makes it possible to investigate the facts exactly and shock chen without endures a strict and precise carrying out of punishments so that's the image now we're in the third line today yeah Yep, third line. Nine in the thir third place means the underbrush is such is of such abundance that the small stars can be seen at noon, and he breaks his right arm. No blame. The image is that of a progressive covering of the sun. Here the eclipse reaches totality. Even therefore, even the small stars can be seen at noon. 
In the sphere of social relationships, this means that the prince is now so eclipsed that even the most insignificant persons can push themselves into the foreground. This makes it impossible for an able man, though he might be the right hand of the ruler, to undertake anything. It is as though his arm were broken, but he is not to blame for thus being hindered in action. Interesting. Oh. It's talking about, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Progressive covering of the sun. So it's an eclipsing. So it's like taking the uh, attention off the main ruler is what it sounds here. Mm. Or, or even just like... Um how you say again it's like there's these rare there's these rare occasions right where that those eclipses will happen and they're and they're natural and so like one of the things that stands out is like the whole like injury is no blame there's like there's no blame for the injury that is um that is causing this eclipse to happen um hmm. yeah this is yeah, really, it, it is ahead. as though his arm were broken but he is not to blame for being thus hindered in action Right. So then, um, you know, something that could come up is like, you know, for me, like the reflection of like certain emotions that have arisen in this past couple of days, having the perspective of like, you know, where am I assuming blame and where am I like punishing myself where there's really no blame or no punishment that needs to be rendered mm. is kind of what's yeah. coming up for me. Which I'm sure is probably kind of heightened for you because you're in your hometown, and I'm about to go to my hometown. Um, ha, huh, okay, interesting. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I already like felt like kind of sad not doing it, and then also like super excited. So I, like extended my flight by three days, so I'm gonna be here till Wednesday now. Oh, okay. It feels really good, but at the same time, I was like, oh boy. I got I got a life to live when I go back home, and I'm like, yeah. And I don't know the next time I'm gonna be out here and see my parents and uh, get right. an extra day of training in with my master. So, right, gotta take the advantage. It's totally free too. It's the best part. That's abundance. That's what, that's abundance, and there's no blame. I do not blame you for that. Although, fuck you for staying away longer. I miss you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Have fun. Uh, we'll see you. Kai is coming. Tomorrow, so we'll have we'll have plenty of fun without you. So anyway, um, let's go. Can you go to gate fifty nine? I'm gonna go tell my TikTok as, you're, as you guys over to do. Discord. Yeah, right. That. All right. Yeah, fifty nine point three. Right. Luke, hit it. Tell them. Tell the TikTokers come to the Discord. Okay, fifty nine. Juan, in the I Ching, disillusion, dispersion. We've got the abysmal water below the gentle wind. Um, wind blowing over water disperses it, dissolving it into foam and mist. This suggests that when a man's vital energy is dammed up within him, indicated as a danger by the attribute of the lower trigram, gentleness serves to break up and dissolve the blockage. The judgment, dispersion, success. The king approaches his temple. It furthers one to cross the great water. Perseverance furthers. The text of this hexagram resembles that of Tsui gathering together, in that the latter, the subjects, the subject is the bringing together of elements that have been separated as water collecting lakes upon the earth. Here, the subject is the dispersing and dissolving of divisive egotism. Dispersion shows the way, so to speak, that leads to gathering together. This explains the similarity of the two texts. Religious forces are needed to overcome the egotism that divides men. The common celebration of the great sacrificial feasts and sacred rites, which gave expression simultaneously to the interrelation and social articulation of family and state, was the means employed by the great rulers to unite men. The sacred music and the splendor of the ceremonies aroused a strong tide of emotion that was shared by all hearts in unison. Comma. And that awakened a consciousness of the common origin of all creatures. In this way, disunity was overcome and rigidity dissolved. A further means to the same end is cooperation in great general undertakings that set a high goal for the will of the people. In the common concentration on this goal, our ba all barriers dissolve. 
Just as when a boat is crossing a great stream, all hands must unite in a joint task. But only a man who is himself free of all selfish ulterior considerations and who perseveres in justice and steadfastness is capable of dissolving the hardness of egotism. Yeah, life force. This is uh, I Ching interpretations from a book that I have here. Um, I forget who it's interpreted by. But yeah, dope. It's good to meet you, Life Force. Seems to you a new face to me. I haven't been here in a little bit because I've been traveling. Well, this is what we usually do with the T in transit. So we'll get the I Ching and then the Rave I Ching together. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, been it's been a really interesting like space to not have you here and see how different my um flow with with doing this is because it's much it's much less um consistent. You know, it's not like every morning in an hour window. It's like I do it pretty much every day. I think I've missed like two days. Yeah. Um but that's it's you know, that's it's one of the things about about learning human design is as I as I think you know, the more that I learn about myself, the less I care because it's not like anyone is going to take anything away from me. It's it's always like, oh, they're, they're going to add some things and some things are going to vibe and some things are going to not. But when they depart, hopefully I will have a deeper appreciation for myself. And while they're here, hopefully I will have a deeper appreciation for myself. And um, yeah, that's been super true with... Um, with our relationship, which ultimately, you know, as a reflector, I'm like, oh, this is nice to have my space. And I'm like, oh, it'll be nice when Luke is back. And so um, nice as a word for like, I really appreciate that there's a dynamic and that nothing is ever the same ever, even though we do move in cycles that, uh, you know, same, same, but different, but same. Yes, exactly. Same, same, but different and same. <laughs> totally. It's been really good for me to just have this time to like be with family and and ponder on my life and what it used to look yeah. looks now and yeah. I'm like, damn, life is so good. Yeah. So so many <laughs> blessings. It's like, you know, you gotta you gotta just work with what's in front of you. Especially as a yeah. generator or a manifesting generator. You gotta just respond to what's in front of you. And if it's an uh uh-uh, uh, you can't be afraid to say the uh uh-uh, uh because that's <laughs> you know how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotta say, uh, you gotta say what's real, or else maybe your stomach gonna be saying it for you later. You know what I'm saying? Speaking yep, for myself, shitting and throwing up at the same damn time, boy. Just... I'm luckily <laughs> I didn't because I went and ate uh, golden oh. with my parents. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh about this. man, <laughs> you're like, uh... yeah. I mean, it's like it's very Free different food? being like vegetarian on um the mainland like it makes a lot of sense being vegetarian on the mainland but you know when you're out in maui or you're hunting your own food you know the 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 meat here is different you know the cows are not in factories or the cows that we get we get our meat from like they are on the mainland so um, yeah it's, it's so different but anyway um okay so that was the judgment can you hit us do the image the image yeah Right. The wind drives over the water, the image of dispersion. Thus the kings of old sacrifice to the Lord. Oh, wait. Thus the kings of old sacrifice to the Lord and built temples. In the autumn and winter, water begins to freeze into ice. When the warm breezes of spring come, the rigidity is dissolved and the elements that have been dispersed in ice flows are united. It is the same with the minds of the people. Through hardness and selfishness, the heart grows rigid, and the, this rigidity leads to separation from all others. Egotism and cupidity isolate men. Therefore, the hearts of men must be seized by a devout emotion. They must be shaken by just awe in face of eternity, stirred with an intuition of the one creator of all living beings, and united through the strong feeling of fellowship experienced in the ritual divine worship. So basically, uh, the, you know, this translation says religious awe, but uh, the way I see it, it's like the one true religion, which is nature and creation mm-hmm. and everything that exists around us. Because, you know, i not a religious person myself, besides the fact that I do worship the fact that we walk on this beautiful earth and have plants and water and things around us. And right. yeah, it's like coming out of the springtime, out of the... Uh, 
the winter and breaking apart those cold, hard feelings and having some warmth to bring softness, gentleness. Well, that is, that is in the, uh, you know, the theme of 59 is the ability to break barriers down to achieve union. And it's not always through um, rigidity and hardness that barriers are broken down. Um, sometimes it's in the opening up of yourself mm -hmm. that your enemy opens themselves up to you or that your your lover opens themselves up to you, which is it's funny that I said that because I've been thinking recently about how uh, obviously we'd be we'd be loving all that anime stuff. And there's always these, um, these yeah. themes around like, you know, even though you're my enemy, I love you so much because you're able to strengthen me in a way that my friends never can because you're willing to kill me. I'm able to access and be more alive in these these moments of our fight that are. Um, yeah, there's there's an intimacy with your enemy that. uh I feel like it gets overlooked quite a bit and it creates this kind of like disrespectful rage filled, almost like childish um, um, antagonizing and violence. Whereas like back in the day, it's like the samurais that would fight each other. It was like, what an honor it is to die by your blade. And it's like, it was, yeah. an honor, it's an honor to take your life. And, and anyway, yeah, it's just, it's, it's important to recognize because there's so many, um, um, at least, you know, here on Maui, you already know, there's so many like enemies in like the government that, um, you know, thinking about them as predators, like apex predators, mind controlling and manipulating so many people on such a massive scale to not acknowledge and respect the level of, um, you know, tenacity and wit and cleverness that it takes to to execute something like that. Again, it's it's just how am I ever going to actually stand up to it? And like, unless I can respect that someone is um, equal to or better than uh, from me. But uh, yeah, big tangent. <laughs> no, it's good tangent. In my good mind, the whole time I was thinking Josh Green, Josh Green, Josh Green. He's the senator of Hawaii. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, Every you know, time I, I see that guy on the news. I'm just like, what a snaky looking guy. He literally looks like he could be Voldemort's son. Is he the senator or is the governor? Uh, that's a good question. He's one of the two. I don't know. One of them hat wearing monkey fuckers. One of them hat wearing hat wearers. True that. Dang. Well, let's see. I don't know if I have anything else on on this transit. You got you got any last words? I got the third line. Okay. Yeah, hit that. Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Today is my mom's birthday. She divorced after they had me. Union bonds made and broken um, need not affect the spirit of abundance. Damn. Thank you for sharing that life for us. That like brings a lot of context to. Holy crap. That's powerful. Well. I'm happy you're here on, on, on this transmission, man, or lady, I know. homie, thank you for being here. Um, all right, Luke, hit us with line three. Six and third place means he dissolves his self, no remorse. Under certain circumstances, a man's work may become so difficult that he can no longer think of himself. He must set aside all personal desires and disperse whatever the self gathers about it to serve as a barrier against others only on the basis of a great renunciation can he obtain the strength for great achievements by setting his goal in a t great task outside himself he can attain the standpoint he dissolves himself no remorse i've been feeling this with like you know since i've been out here i've been going to my kung fu studio and having conversations with my master and it's like to step into the role of becoming a Sifu is like to truly like dissolve one's own being in essence. It's like I am undertaking a great responsibility that makes me unavailable to a lot of other things in a way, but right. in a good way because I'm deciding to learn to do this thing to share it with others. Like one of the main things that I've been like interested to tell you about Marco is like, so once I become an instructor and I'm on this path, 
I I should not be sparring with anybody else outside of my martial arts or outside of my my other fellow instructors, which is like kind of what we were seeing in Baki, but the opposite. Like in Baki, they were like, oh, you're also Shaolin? I can't fight you because we're of the same lineage. With this, it's like not sparring other people um, because of the fact that I'll have learned so much that I can become quite uh, dangerous to others. And also others' judgments and ideas of me can also be dangerous of me now that I'm building a reputation for myself. That makes sense. I'm so curious about that because the heretic in me is like, fuck that. <laughs> like that's You're, interesting. The heretic that's, in me is like, what? And the heretic in me is like, fuck that. Like you have, you have to fight. Like you can't choose not to fight someone because they're not your, you know, they're, they, they don't, they don't fight the same style as you. That's, that's just me. That's me though. You know how I am. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I love that your heretic wants to bump up against the the Shaolin ways. When I heard it, I was like, cool. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I still got my homies. Like, that'll never change, even though that's considered technically the same thing. But (laughs) hands rated E for everyone. (laughs) Hands rated E for everyone. Yeah, I know, right? And I I mean... to me, like again, like to me, really, what it is 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 the curiosity of like why why does that rule exist in your school? And uh, for instance, like why is it the opposite in Baki, right? Like that's just I just those 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 things come up for me. Um, you know, yeah. to me, it feels like it goes along with the the the, the teaching of like. Uh, deflect or dissolve before hurt, hurt before maim, maim before kill. Mm-hmm. It's just like now that I've like taken on this this role as an instructor to be, you know, sharing this martial arts. It's up to me to do it with great reverence and respect. And if I go out of, you know, my way and out of my school and harm somebody, then it reflects on the entire school and the entire system of kung fu. If that makes sense mm. because it's different I, times. I Whereas in Bach, see. it's like, oh, we're all gonna challenge each other. Now it's just like I think even more so now it's just like the focus is on longevity, and it's like, um, it's less about who's the superior fighter, and it's more about like you know how much knowledge can I attain and share with others, and how long can mm-hmm. I live while doing it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I see. I see that the emphasis on that. Um, still curious. I might. I might just be an asshole and be like, "Oh, Luke's not allowed to fight in this one because you're not. You're not a. You, you don't train. You train Shaolin. No. Ah, you're not allowed you're to fight. Can't fight our boy. Uh, <laughs> and I'll just look at you and you'll be like, "Man, I really wanted to fight him." But like, hey, man, look. <laughs> you can join the school and become an instructor. Then you can fight. Me. Then you can fight my then boy. Honor to fight me that i mean that see that right there what you said actually makes even more sense because regarding like the art being um you know like very like a well-kept in a way um not wanting to telling your instructors hey like don't fight anyone unless you have to a of of not leaking any of the like secret shaolin moves that you might learn that's a big um, that makes too. more sense that makes way more sense to me than than any other um, any of the other stuff. Um, yeah, that was a big emphasis too, because you yeah. never know who's watching and who's studying, and then they right. learn the secrets. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Um, yeah, I get it. But that's also still very interesting, because like the opposite happened to my grandmaster. Once my grandmaster like had a, had achieved his rank, um, his teacher told him to, hey go out and go show people this like whoever wants to learn but it, you know again it was a different time it was a time when the filipinos were being you know basically um enslaved by the spanish um and so they needed a, a fighting technique to um to defend themselves and defend each other and whatnot and so you know yeah again just very different yeah. times and contexts is that these rules and ultimately different men making different decisions. I mean, mostly men, some oh, women, absolutely. but but mostly men making just, you know, decisions that they thought were best based off um, what they had experienced. Um, so yep. yeah, super interesting. Yeah, I agree. 
Cool, man. Yeah. Well, uh, any last things to say? Uh, nothing specific. I just got a piece out of here. My dad is uh, requesting my assistance with some things. It's perfect timing. Lawfully excellent. It's really good well, to be here with you all. For joining. Yeah, I love you guys. Love you, Marco. Look forward to seeing you. I'll let you know what yeah. time I land Wednesday so we can get all linked up. Shoots, my bro. All right. Peace. Aloha. Thank you. Everybody else. Aloha. Thank you for being here. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe later tonight. Peace.